And hi everyone, welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanani and I'm joined today by Jeff Blanchard. And not yes. on the screen right now. Is he? And uh, we also have Harold Bugliotti. He's running the video switcher, mixer, and he'll be joining us shortly. How you doing, Jeff? Good, thank you, Rick. That was loud. Nothing, a lot, lot happening with me with the, the tech this week, but I don't know what you've got this week. But, uh, um, I don't know. We can talk about been. things, though. Here we go. I've got plenty to talk This show is sponsored by Relate Corporation at www.relate.com. Your training and video partner. And we are back and there's Harold. Here I am. Here you <laughs> are. <laughs> and so we actually were supposed to have Ken Wheeler on, but we weren't able to get a hold of him. So we don't know where he is. So we'll have to reschedule him for another day. It's already kind of late on this show. Yeah. Um, and so what's new in your life, Jeff? Well, I was just saying before the show, I said you know, there's nothing much new that I've seen, but I was just thinking about that. It's, uh, it's, it's amazing how there's always lots of new things there when you're looking for them, but when you're not interested, when you don't want to buy something, there's nothing out there. Yep. But, the, <laughs> said, but when you've got your eye on something, there's always something new out there to buy. Like what's been getting my attention this week, I don't know why, but I've all of a sudden gone back into uh, a more in the programs, in like a, we were talking before, like Adobe InDesign with mm. all the innovation that have got on that and the audition and all the different bits and pieces they've got on that. Unlike a lot of people that can sit in front of the computer for hours playing these video games, I'm on the opposite. I do the other things. I sit in front of the computer and hours, try to figure out programs and <laughs> make the best out of them. Don't yeah. do a very good job at it, but that's why it keeps me going. <laughs> well, Never get and, too comp. And for tech, well, we're going to DevLearn next week. So we've been setting up uh, camera. So we're, we're going to take the GH5 on the video shoot. Well, we're actually going to be chronicling and documenting a little bit of the show as well as interviewing a lot of people as we're there kind of randomly. So we've got Tony Peck who's coming out as our video shooter. Leslie and I are going to be doing interviews and kind of, I'll probably be holding a fill light with a different uh, monopod. But what we're taking with us is really plain basic this time. We're taking two monopods, one with a fluid head and one that just has, it's a slick, which you just screw in. Then um, we're taking the Panasonic GH5. We're taking... I think we're doing the 12 to 60 millimeter lens, which yeah, is yeah, a very good yeah. lens. Uh, and it's f2.8 all the way across. Um, and let's see, what else? We're going to use as a monitor the Ninja V or Ninja 5. And that is such, a, we were talking a little pre-show, that is such a wonderful monitor. It is bright. It has very good battery life. We ran a test yesterday, and we don't know if it was a bad battery or just when you go to 100% on screen brightness, it eats the battery. What, what did we get, one hour and 45? We got an hour and 45. At, that was at the maximum brightness, though. So today, we lowered it down to about 60%, and we, it looked we like... We have it at 50 right now, actually. Oh, it's at 50, and it looked like we were going to get maybe three or four hours? We're not sure. When... when <laughs> When we checked at about the hour 15 mark, it looked like it had three quarters left on the indicator. I'm yeah. not sure. So we make it four hours on that. I mean, those are, those, uh, th they, they use sort of the big Sony camcorder batteries and yeah. uh, those were pretty new. We haven't used those batteries much, so they should be pretty mm -hmm. accurate on the indicators. Yeah. And um, so the Ninja 5 for audio, we're taking the Rode Reporter microphone. You just hold it near your mm -hmm. chest. I didn't bring it in here, but, and... And that's connected to the wireless road system, which is just like a little brick that you attach to it, and it transmits the the road receiver, just receives it wirelessly. And it's really easy. You just hand somebody the mic or you hold it, and it's an easy way to do interviews at a trade show without having to do shotguns or lavaliers mm -hmm. or other things that are wireless. It's yeah, easier it's, to do it this way. It's part of the uh, Rode Link wireless system, but the plug-on transmitter for the microphone is an extra 
thing that you have to buy. Yes. That comes with the system, though. Okay, so that that one does come with. Yeah. So when you when you get a dual like from B and H, if if you get the Road Link uh, system by Road, that's a wireless system. It comes with two transmitters, two receivers, and one transmitter that can be attached to any XLR uh, that mm. you might have. So you could put it on any microphone that supports XLR, and and just have a, a wireless mic without needing the typical lavalier transmitter. So it's really kind of a neat device and you know you can hand it to the person you're interviewing and if they try to get away you tackle them. It's it's straightforward. Mm. It's <laughs> nothing. And the uh, great thing with those though, like the, the lavaliers are just too awkward to put to on put to on people, people want, especially especially women safe. because if you don't want it to show, then you've either got to go underneath their blouses or and in some shops, I mean when we did a ton of corporate video uh, some places didn't care. Other places had HR that said, do not touch any females. Okay. Mm. Even though we're used to doing this, you have to go under. We usually tell them to put it underneath and just come on, and then we just hook it up here. But in some cases, and we did one that was actually sort of funny. Uh, our uh, The guy who was shooting the video, he was an older guy. He's a very, very funny guy, um, Bill. And... And there was a very pretty girl, and she goes, "Well, you guys are professionals, right?" He goes, "Absolutely." And she goes, "Here, you put it for me." So he kind of oh. got a little under, and he snaked it up, and and he, she goes, "Yeah, that's better. I didn't know how to do that." And he goes, "Right," and and he looks at me, and goes, "We're professional, but that was good." <laughs> and I'm just going, <laughs> "It's uh, so wrong." Uh, <laughs> It's like, but as uh, I said, they're they're okay with the lavaliers if it's a, it's a, it's a formal thing where you know it where is, the it is it is and and you know still. if you ever go to like if you're ever doing real video shoots, you, you, people are naked half the time. They're just changing really quickly and nobody cares. Yeah. It's just it's just you're there, you're in a performance. You don't have time to think about it. Nobody really cares. It's just a quick boom boom. You're done, and they, because those clothing changes happen in seconds sometimes. So they're fast. And so nobody cares. They don't have time to to uh, be modest, if you will, and um, and and the grips and the and the camera. They don't care either. They're just like, yeah, we got to get out of here. We we only have another hour or two to film. We got to leave. And so that's one of those industries nobody really cares that much. It's just got to get got to get it done. Got to get out of here. But the thing is, like you're doing with Devil, and that's where the 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 standalone mics the best because. You don't know who you're going to talk to next. Yeah. It might be somebody just next door to them. Yeah, well, you, you just hand just it to them. Pause and you just hand it to them, and they're they're so good because they're a dynamic mic, aren't they? Yes. They're not a condensed. <laughs> so but also they're built. Good. They're built so that when you let me see, do I have a mic here? Uh, I think because I've seen you've used them before, they seem to be fairly good. They do a great yeah. sound close to the person, but as soon as it moves away, it doesn't get a lot of no a lot of the background. No, and you don't have to have it in their mouth, oh. like real no. close. You literally hold it, kind of like mm. a newscaster, right about your chest. And the thing is, it's amazing how well they did the the pattern on it. Yeah, that was really good engineering. Um, and Rode is clever. They're very good. They're very good, you know, audio engineers and developers because they really do come out with with good mics. My only cr critique of Rode is that a lot of the mics sound almost exactly the same. Yes. And that's why I don't want to buy them anymore. I've got about five or six Rode mics, and yeah. short of minor different? differences, they're really close. Mm. Which is not a bad thing. That means no. they're good quality. But the whole reason we buy different mics is because. Yeah, we want a different sound. Yes, to sound that's, different. That's yeah, the thing, the all sound different the, the, for a, a different project. The, yes, they are all good quality, but they all have that sound resonance, and so we've already got that. So we might and, we go for a different one that sounds quite different. With the reporter, we were uh, th kind of throughout the week we were testing it. We were testing different mic setups for for mm -hmm. the DevLearn shoot, and we tested the. Uh, lab we t uh the road wireless go you know they have a built-in mm -hmm. lab and we were testing Whoa. that we tested um the sennheiser M is it mke, MKE 600? 600 a, a shotgun mic yep. and then we tested the road reporter and what we were doing is we were trying to c recreate uh oh we did the ntg4 too i think yeah that's right 
Yeah, we ended. Up, yeah, we we tested the NTG four, but we we were trying to recreate sort of conference conditions where you would be interviewing mm. someone and, and there would be people talking very loudly in the background. And and we, so tell us who won. Definitely the road reporter, because we even got to the point mm -hmm. where you know uh, Rick and Leslie were talking like kind of I, like Loud. I was interviewing Sarah, yeah. and we could barely hear our, each other talking o over uh, Rick and Leslie. But on the on the uh, microphone, you could hear both mm -hmm. of our voices o well over uh, Rick and Leslie. So yeah, the road w is surprising, and I was actually surprised that the little wireless goes, which are very nice lavalier wireless mics. They let a lot of noise in. Yeah, yeah. They well, relatively. I mean, they're pretty good they, at the. It noise was good enough, too, yeah. but and you could hear, but it wasn't as good as the road reporter. Nowhere near. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's also yeah, well, a much smaller that, capsule. But the thing is, with the the, the, the lavaliers and those smaller ones, they they designed to pick up a bit more, aren't they? Uh, to, uh, and that's one of their downfalls. Yeah. Where they seem to yeah. pick up a little bit too much, or or they pick up the wrong wrong thing. Like I know those Sennheisers, the lavaliers, they're really really good, but yeah. you've got to spend quite a bit of time setting them up correctly, or else you'll get the worst sound possibly out of if you if you don't spend a little bit of time setting it up correctly. That's true. And also, they have very small capsules. They sound good, mm -hmm. but it's a small capsule, which doesn't have that much projection, whereas the Rode Reporter is, is a pretty big capsule. It's not a large diaphragm, but it's still a pretty big capsule, and that has much more rejection. You've got built-in, I think, windscreen inside, and, and for $125, that is an amazing price for, for a, a mic like that. But even then, you can still use things like uh, the thing is with well, a lot of the road ones. Though you can get you can get like the 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 boom, mm -hmm. the uh, the shotgun, I should say, like this one, the NTG two. But you can use that as a standalone because a lot of those ones they have one where you can just insert a battery for the phantom power. Yeah, and so you don't need need that. But because the, they can do quite a good job because they're directional. So if you can, yep. if you don't want the people to hold, you just point it to them, hold it like that, and then point it back to you can do quite a good job with those as well yeah no, now i have yeah. to ask you how are you enjoying your 416 the sennheiser mkh oh, 416 i'm really liking that but the only thing is i don't like about it it makes some of my other microphones seem rubbish now so i know, <laughs> I know. isn't that sad it's you, you know it's the same i have the same mic and and the ksm 42 and you, you put those on and mics you thought were really good all of a sudden just hmm. Though, you know what? This yeah. mic is lasting on me. Yeah, I've been doing it for three really weeks. Three weeks, I have not taken it off the boom. I love this mm. mic. It's the Sennheiser MK4. Very good microphone. It has a nice sound to it. And I can't get over the price. $299 for this. It's a beautiful wow. looking mic. And it just has a very nice sound and a good pattern. Watch. If I start talking, I move just this far away. I'm not that loud, am I? Yeah. No, that's really good because that that really rejects a lot of noise, and it's a great voiceover mic. I I just love you, this mic. You know what? Somebody should invent Rick. That somebody should invent a microphone, which has a, a, a like a holographic projection of hmm. the where it's picking up from, so you that can see cool. the borders. That would be cool. So you could just see exactly, and then you can change it and make it do it yeah. out to further or narrow the beam down. So like a shotgun, yeah. where you could narrow it down and point to a person, so you could see that. I thought that would be really good. Then you could say, "There's no, you know exactly." So when I did this voiceover, I was this far away. You can see it. Yep. You don't have to try and do that. That would be a great idea. That'd be, that'd be that, fun. Or the slightly more aggressive <laughs> method where it gives you an electric shock if you go outside of the pattern. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then you, every time you hear you go, welcome to, oh, I'm too far away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, they do that. It's like that's what they do for the dogs, don't they? They put the... Yeah. Put oh, the yeah, electric the electric fences. fences. The, the wire in the ground, so if they go mm -hmm. too close to it, get a bit of a shock if they go too close to it. So, However, if the, the dog's microphone. smart, they can run really fast and go right through it and go, ah, and then they're gone. <laughs> yeah, just for a second. And just for a second. Ah, right. And they're gone. <laughs> it's like, what happened to the dog? He was smarter than you thought. Oh, because uh, once you get out of the range, the collar won't go anymore. And they can literally run out, except 
dogs aren't that smart sometimes and they just sit there going mm oh but then again yeah. i think i think for things like that we're getting off the subject a bit but for dogs you need to talk to the dutch about that the because dutch. with them with 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 horses and that they have all these fields and that but because they're so low lying they can't have fences because the water keeps coming up over them so they have a little ditch and mm. the horses never seem to get over them they teach them not to go over these little ditches <laughs> You, That's you funny. don't get a Dutch horse show jumping because they don't like jumping puddles. <laughs> there was there was there was a movie I saw years ago, Meetings with Remarkable Men. It was about the life story of of Georges Ivanovich Gurdjieff, who was kind of a philosopher mystic from Russia back in the early 1900s, and he I think this was in Afghanistan and or either that or, or one of the other places nearby, um, and they had this guy in a circle and he couldn't get out of it he's like ah. and the minute they made a hole in the circle the guy could ran away and they said they can never leave the circle the minute the circle is there they're completely bound by the circle and it was interesting their mind could not do anything yeah. until that there was an opening in that circle it's fascinating it was a, it's a bit like a things we had a, a racehorse trainer here and all this property all the paddocks and all all the fields were all round and because and they said why have you done it all round they said because horses go going and running into fences into the corners mm. with huh. it's round there's never any corners that, there's nothing for them to jump is that why they do they the round? yeah yeah because they always do those so round things for the horses i never knew why hmm. oh well that's for them to 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 train him but train it, yeah it, a lot of the people don't do round fields because you lose a hell of a lot of right. space. <laughs> yeah. These all those little bits in the corners where you've in the round you lose quite a lot of space, mm -hmm. but it's quite a good idea because horses just will run round. They won't get to a corner and want to jump out of it. So yeah, that's true. By the way, but sorry if I'm if I'm yawning on the show. I've I was been up since about before four since like. Uh, <laughs> trying to get air in the room. Well, I must admit, I've, I've been doing, getting stuck into uh, different things, like I said, with different programs, and I've been working on the old Lectora 11, reloading that onto an oh old machine. Oh, my gosh. That's that's prehistoric. <laughs> it is, definitely. They've got up to 18. I think it's 18 now yeah. on that. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, but... Huh. <laughs> But all the things trying to set that up to that, but um, I mean, I, I think I've got to invest in, in up, upgrading to the 18 in Lectora because the yeah. the different technology they do have right. on it's that. It's a little so. bit different. It may not be as mm. different as you think, but it's a little different. Well, I've been looking at it. That's what, as I said, 11 so old, but then 18. So I was looking at that, and there's still a lot of things that still look quite similar. <laughs> so, yeah, where, where, where they made changes, and now you get better transitions, and and and. Mm. Uh, just some new logic and it just it, they cleaned up a lot of stuff and they made it so that it works a little bit better with like uh, HTML5 uh, so you know things like that but it's, it's not that that different it, it has changed in some ways and they add some of the content libraries and which we don't find that useful they're okay they, they help sometimes but you know articulate has the same content libraries and and captivate almost mm. has the same library so it's sort of funny everybody's got the same content uh, <laughs> well, what what gets me with all all the technologies and all the different things with all these programs? You see, they advertise this, and people, oh, look at this! This is great, much better than Lector or Captivate or, or all these ones. Hmm. And I said, no, it's not. It's just the programs. Whoever put that together makes it look like that. They said, right. when you get it, you've still got to put it together. It doesn't just happen. <laughs> oh, it's so easy in this one. I said, well, no, you've still got to come up with the idea. <laughs> yep. You've got to still come up interaction it doesn't just do itself technology is quite good but as i said uh, i'll use like my microphones that's what a lot of things i do 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 voiceovers for e-learning modules yeah. and that but i'm always looking for different things in technology to make life to make things better but that don't take you th three days to do that's just uh, yep. does it very quickly so. so let me ask you do you think micro four thirds cameras are on the way out I, I personally, I wouldn't think so, but you never know. It's, it's all depends what the market determines out there. If somebody gets it into the mind that they are and they stop buying them, it'll, it will make them just disappear. Well, they're saying right now the number one uh, maker of mirrorless cameras is Canon. 
because mm-hmm. they make so many cheap little wireless cameras. I'm, I'm not mirrorless. I'm sorry, not wireless. Um, and then it was followed by Sony. And third on mm-hmm. the list shocked me. It wasn't Panasonic. It was actually Olympus. Oh, okay. Shocking. Shocking. Um, I didn't think Olympus sold much at all recently, but they do make good lenses. Um, they're heavy, but they're really pretty, pretty darn good. But it's funny because a lot of people are talking that, you know, like for example, Jay Christina, he was in his uh, podcast yesterday. He was talking about the micro first four thirds just can't survive. He goes, APS-C sensors are where everybody's moving to, and that gives you much better resolution than a micro four thirds. And other than that. He goes, Micro Four Thirds is great. He loves his GH4 or 5 or whatever he's got. I think he's got a 5 mm-hmm. among other cameras. But he said, you know, Panasonic's not only talking about the S1 and the S1R and the S1H. They don't even bring up Micro Four Thirds anymore. So you do wonder. And I, and I, I think it would be a shame because it is a really nice system. And, and those cameras have the best ergonomics, I think, as good or better than Canon. Yeah, and and it's all like you say the the micro four thirds from the, what I've got with my GH five, I get a perfect picture. It's not, I'm not lacking anything, mm-hmm. and I know people say, "Oh, you need the full frame to do this and to do." It, it all depends what you're doing on it. But uh, I think we all yeah. still a lot of the time get caught up with, "You need this, you need that." But let's look. The 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 outcome from the same sort of person is usually the same. Mm-hmm. You might have a full frame camera that does all the whiz bang thing. It would do exactly the same picture quality as your iPhone would, yep. and in the in the same hands, really. Yep. But it's it's marketing that gets us all out to that, and that'll probably kill the APS-C as well. We'll just say, well, no, there's nothing but full frame. That's all. That's the only way that people need to go. Yeah. In that. But uh, uh, but uh, at least the thing is, you get. I've got the system. It will last long enough, and I don't care if a format disappears because I'm so fickle with my electronics by in 10 years time I'll be that fed up with it that it won't, it won't be That's even if they true. are that yeah. I'll, I'll want something different and even full frame won't be there'll be something different and not like yeah. it was like well quantum, you said Olympus quantum frame my, photography yeah quantum my first my first camera was an Olympus trip 35 oh really they've spotted along but I thought you know Though a lot of the others never did it, Panasonic never did any cameras back then, did no, the, no, they never did anything like that. Whereas Olympus have just and they, I don't know if you've seen the quality of some of the Olympus, their they're photos really nice. just seemed they're different. They, I can't they're explain very it, solid. not a Canon they're, look, but no, the they're very colors solid. Are really just nice. I quite like them, and uh, but as I said, um, but that's I think that's all they do, isn't it? Is cameras that don't yeah. mess about with anything. Else. So now we have, we have the several. Opposite. Uh, no, Olympus also does recorders. That's one of my favorite oh, sound recorders. Is the Olympus right. LS LS one hundred? I think. I, I think it's the LS one hundred. Yeah. That thing oh. is. I, I'll take that over a Zoom any day. Mm. It, it's just cleaner. It's just that it's. It it can work as like a digital audio interface, just not as well. The, and they haven't really come out with a new one to replace it. This thing's about I don't know seven years old. So, but it's it's a wonderful recorder. It's yeah, really this is, clean. This is what it looks like. That's the LS100 oh, yeah. right there. Oh, it's and you know what it does? And here's another thing it does that I love. Because it's hard to read the zooms. They have really crummy LCDs on them. Um, it talks to you. It tells you what menu oh, you're on, what you're on. It tells you what settings you have. It's just a lot easier. And it records really, really clean audio. So, And it's got two XLRs on the bottom. I saw that by the looks of it. It looks like mm-hmm. quite a nice. I'll have to have a look at them. I didn't think, didn't realize it did. Uh, oh, it's a beautiful. I I, I'll tell you, it's a lot nicer than any Zoom I've ever had. I, a lot I actually nicer. just gave my Olympus. I just gave my Olympus Trip Thirty Five to a friend not so long hmm. back because he collects old cameras. So I thought, here, yeah, was it, was that film? That was film, right? Yeah, yeah, it was old. That's how well I was only. I think I was eleven when I got it. So that's huh. how old it is. Well, that's only like ten <laughs> years ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah you wish. Hang on, no, no, wish. I don't. I don't wish I was eleven again. I definitely not. So. No, it wasn't I'm a very good year. Right eleven now. was one of those transition years. Yep. I think it would be a little awkward not, not, going into work if you were eleven again. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, when I was 11 as well back then, there was no internet, <laughs> none of all mm. these technologies, like you said, a film camera where you had to do take some pictures and then, yeah, you might see them six months later when you can afford with your pocket money to get the film developed. Yep, <laughs> so. yeah, I know. They were expensive to develop the film. And, 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 the, quality, and the quality of most of the local places was crummy. Yeah. Yeah. It had, everything had like a purple or kind of tinge to it, and they and they faded quickly, right? <laughs> but you used to, but it was it was a, a thing though. You used to love putting them in and go, oh, they'll be back in a week. I can yes. go and pick go and pick them yeah. up in a week. Or you, you could go to in. the photomat. Remember photomat, and you could get them in about an hour or two. Oh well, not when I was that age. That came much much later. Yeah, so. that was more. That was uh, somewhere in the probably late seventies. Yeah, maybe 80s. 80s and that was then, around for about you, 10 15 years and then digital came in that was the end of photomat but then when you did those ones it was a bit like that you can get them in an hour or two but if you waited four days it was about a third of the price yes <laughs> you know, that's right you, yep you wait and you know then, i i hated cameras then because you had 36 or 24 shots yes. that's it and it's like oh man i gotta get it right if i don't get it right it's a waste. And then, and yeah, then, pe then, you, pe yeah, then you have people like my then, mom who would take the same shot 16 times. <laughs> and I go, and then you get it, and she would try to figure out which was the best one. It's like, <laughs> um, and then, it's, then you'd have the wrong type of filming for the wrong type of thing. Yeah, now, now, the, the good thing is. 100. Oh, Sorry. the 100? Right, the different ISOs. I'll yeah. Say, ISO in the film, but you can't change it midstream. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All shots are 100, no matter. But it's nighttime now. Too bad. Um, <laughs> and and nobody cared about low light in those days. There was no light in those days. Yeah, that's right. Well, you just didn't take pictures at night, or no. else you looked like you looked like a vampire when the flash came on. <laughs> 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 because it used to blind. It, it were never very subtle, and the way no. things to. Back Things, no, so. and they were powerful flashes too. Um, yeah, it's sort of funny. You know, with with Leslie, my wife, she'll never waste a roll of film. She can never figure out where the shutter release is. I keep telling her it's in the same place on all cameras. And she's not a photographer. <laughs> no, I've no, still no. got a, I've still got a, a camera light that bought for the first eight millimeter film camera, mm. you know, the Super Eight film camera and i put that on the not so long back but it's it's a thousand watt <laughs> like switch it on and it, you can feel it nearly burning through you oh, it's, gosh. It's, you can't tone it down you it's just so bright you put a, yep. a slice of bacon on your forehead <laughs> <laughs> and i thought you just can't use it it's, it's one of those that because you had to have them that bright or else you wouldn't see anybody in the yeah. old film you yeah, know. the and good you, old days. Also, the older lights were were not only you had to have them bright, but the really bright ones were way hotter too, right? Oh yeah. And, and also, though, I think the quality of film sometimes was a bit better because you think, is that film worthy? No, I'm not going to yeah. press my finger <laughs> on that. One. No, because it's it's thirty five dollars for three and a half minutes. I'm not. No, no, that's not getting and, into the shots. So and you, and you remember, it. and you remember, Jeff. We we used to have a kit that was three lights. Uh, they were, I think, halogen, three thousand watts, the one thousand watt each, three thousand mm. total. And you would put, you know, that's how you did your three, you know, uh, three point lighting, and you put talent in the middle, and they're like, <sighs> okay, <laughs> smile now. <sighs> It, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible because they were dying. The talent, and when I started shooting video, and the, the talent was dying. They they, mm. they were under such hot lights, and 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 you know you didn't have super sensitive sensors either, or you had film, which is even worse. Um, but oh, that was torturous. Not good. Mm. Anyway, I think we're nearly done at our time now, haven't we? We've even gone over, I think, now a bit. I think we have. Uh, we are, well, actually, we started a little bit late, but 30. I think we're about there. I actually have um, another video that I took on the uh, ah. Fuji X-T2. Should I show that? Sure. Yeah, let's roll that. It's just of our uh, of my family's pet turtles, but I cut together. It's a, it's a fast that. video. Yeah. I was just going to say it's a fast mo action video. I like the music.
<laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Looking good though. Yeah, I, li I definitely like. I'm liking this camera so far. Yeah, I mean, the quality looks nice. I gave him mine, <laughs> Jeff. What'd you have say? I found out why Which the the one I gave you didn't sell at all. Really? Why? I, I found out why. We were selling. We were trying to get like I don't know thirteen and fourteen hundred for it. A yeah. brand new XT three is like twelve thirteen hundred. Oh, is that? And right? I went, oh, hmm. yeah, they've really gone down. Um, but you know, it's I, I really do think it's a great camera for pictures and video. I mean, I just didn't like the interface, and and Harold does, so that's good. I mean, again, we had that. You're you're including that lens with it in the listing, and that's, yeah. that lens is like a thousand new. So is it? Yeah, it's amazing. It's so. a really good lens. When I was looking it up last week, is so. that what is it? Seventeen to fifty, sixteen to fifty-five. Uh, it's, um, can't remember something like that, right? I think it's 15 to 55 or 15 something. 15 to 55. Yeah. yeah it's and a it's really a quiet one, lens. It's good for video. And, um, it, it, you just have to get used to the controls. I don't like that range finder control and it's just all about taste. It's what you like, what yeah, you don't it, like. It's taking a little, I still need to get used to it, but yeah. For some people liked it because it has the traditional mm -hmm. type camera feel with all right. the knobs on the top, not too many electronic things, but that's why a lot of people like that. So. Yeah. But yeah. you obviously wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't one of them, and I don't mind. I mean, I don't mind having knobs on the camera. I don't like when they combine two or three different things on one knob. One knob, no. And you're in a darker room or something, you can't read it. It's like, and you can look at the screen, but on the... For me, the X-T2 was tough. It was very teeny fonts. It's almost as bad as the, I think Olympus was even worse. They were using like three Olympus, point font. Yeah, they, they tend to have really small fonts. On oh my gosh. I had, Olympus was the only camera I had for less than a day. <laughs> oh, It's like, geez. I took it out, I looked at it, and I think I, I packed it up and took it in the next day, but I didn't look at it even one minute after that. Yeah, I think you said because it was, you just held it in your hand and you said, I can't, you I can't put my just, hand. The grip hand was, was small, too big. <laughs> and a big, and, and I had a big lens, and the lens, I couldn't put my fingers in the grip with the lens. It's like, oh, this yeah. is dumb. And but I mean, it did take beautiful pictures. It had I mean, a yeah, lot he, of control. Like uh, Ramon, he 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 likes to use his Olympus. Uh, I mm -hmm. forget which which one. Does one he have the EM five, something like that? I think it was it was that, but um, it's it was the EM one or EM oh, EM one, yeah. But uh, yeah, he gets some really nice shots out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a beautiful camera. Olympus does take good cameras. You know, they have that newer one, which is $3,200. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a lot of money for um, for a micro four thirds. Yeah, it is. <laughs> mm. Anyway, there's always so. a new camera. Has a mind of its own. That's right. So make anyway. sure you know that. Yeah, I'm there. <laughs> mm. well, anyway, for all you people watching, have a good one. Enjoy your tech. Have fun. Give us a thumbs up. Tell us you love us. Or give us a thumbs down and be nice. Um, Harold, Jeff, we'll see you guys next week. Yeah, on Elon Chat. Bye, everyone. Yeah. No. Take down over. Am I coming Take in down on Elon Chat? Yes. I told you it was three in the morning, or almost well, four in the morning today. It's not. Well, you, you'll be over at DevLearn filming eLearn chat. That's right. I'll week. be filming Tech Down over at DevLearn. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> Where talk is knowledge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, now it's what you, what, um, where you, you always, always learn, learn something new. Yeah. We hope. And something new. Oh, is that new? We hope. New yeah. Cash? We hope. <laughs> We've been doing that for about a year now, if not mm -hmm. longer. About a year. Have you? Yeah, it's been about I'm a sure year. Maybe you slipped yeah. into one when I was watching. Yeah. It. Where talk is knowledge. Yeah. Sometimes. Anyway, have a good <laughs> right. one, guys, and we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Thanks.